Good day. I'm a teacher of Uzbek Israel Joint Faculty of the National University of Uzbekistan, Mamadova Firuza Bakhtiarovna. And today we'll talk about lesson two of unit nine. It's for B1 level student. And in this lesson, we'll talk about phrasal verbs. What are they? What are phrasal verbs? They are phrases that indicate actions. Uh, they're generally used in spoken English or in uh, informal texts. When preposition or adverb is added to verb, it may completely change the meaning of a verb. We know the translation of verb, but when it comes with different preposition or adverb, we uh, sometimes can confuse about translation. What is translation? What is meaning? Not always we can understand the meaning of phrasal verbs. If it has literal meaning, as it given here, um, we can translate it easily. She opened the door and looked outside. Look outside. The phrasal verb is look outside. When you look out of window, when you look at street, it's very easy to translate and get meaning. But worry about figurative or idiomatic meaning. Sometimes some phrasal verbs can have figurative meaning. It means not straight meaning. Can you put me up for tonight? What is put up? We know it as raise, lift or pick up. But here in brackets we have another meaning. It means to let someone stay in your house. Let someone stay in your house. You see? The translation is different, not straight. It means figurative or idiomatic meaning. In this uh, case, it's very difficult to translate, but we have to look up the dictionary to search the verb. Here we have the list of phrasal verbs which are connected with reading and writing. The first one, read on, continue reading to go on reading. When the book is very interesting, you're not stopping reading, you go on. Look up. Try to find a particular piece of information in a book. You try to find a particular piece, the information you need. You try to search something special, specific information. Fill in. Write information in empty spaces. Mostly, in the lesson, we um, do this such kind of task. For example, we fill in the gaps or we insert the information into gaps. The next, flick through. Turn the pages of a book quickly. Not looking carefully. Turn the pages of a book quickly. When you uh, turn one by one pages, to look through it very fast. The next, cross out, draw and X or a line through some writing to show that it's not correct. When you made mistake, you try to make line on your mistake or uh, cross the X on your mistake. It means that it's wrong. It's not correct. The next is Read out. Read so that other people can hear you. Read in a loud voice. Everybody should hear you when you read. The next is flip through. Look quickly through. For example, a book, magazine, etc. Look quickly through. You don't read in details. You don't read it carefully. But just to look through. You turn pages to look the information quickly. Living through to peruse a book, magazine or other reading material by casually turning the page often without much attention. Here you don't pay attention to pictures, you don't pay attention to information, you just look through your uh, book or uh, other type of books, magazines, newspapers. So, the following phrasal verbs are also connected with reading and writing. 
thumb through. You turn the pages quickly rather than reading each page carefully. It's the same meaning with the previous one. Dip into to read small parts of a book or a magazine. You just get here information. You don't read it fully. Skim through to read something hurriedly without being attached to details. When you want to get information, not paying attention to specific information, you skim. Just read, but not in details. Pour over to read or study very carefully. We can say that you pour over your notes. Notes um, of lessons, of subjects. Plow through to finish reading. When you, uh, your book is very interesting, you try to plow through to finish your reading. Wade through to spend a lot of time and efforts for reading. We can use this phrasal verb when we talk about our subjects, our notes. Read up on to learn about something by reading. Um, we know that each person is different. Some uh, of them like to learn by writing, some of them learn by watching, but people who learn by reading uh, can use this phrasal verb, read up on. Turn over, to turn page in a book or a sheet of paper so that the other side is towards you. When you open the next page, the following page, turn your page. And the last one, scan to look through text quickly in order to find a piece of information. When you scan a book, uh, it means that you try to find a specific information. For example, the date of birth of a famous person. You search only this information. You don't pay attention to his life, to his education or career. No, just his date of birth. In this slide, we have sentences which uh, help us to uh, fix our material. Let's read them and analyze. The first one, I don't want to stop now. I want to read on to the end. I don't want to stop. Here we have the keyword stop. It means we should try to go on our reading. I want to read on means go on reading. The next one. Can you read out your answer to the next question so that we can all hear it? Read out, read in a loud voice. The next, I don't understand some of these words. I'm going to look them up in my dictionary. Look them up to search a word in dictionary. To try to look some word. Look up. The next. I want you all to turn over the page and continue reading. As we have just told, turn over means to uh, open the next page, the following page. Turn the page. The next one. Read the sentences and then fill in the gaps. Fill in means to insert the information or word into the space or gaps. And the next, he flicked through the book quickly to see if he liked it before he bought it. Flicked through to look through the book. Okay, before buying it, you should decide, buy or not. If it's interesting, you can buy, but before that you have to flick through the book. The next, it doesn't look good when you make lots of mistakes and then you cross them out. Cross out. It means to make a line on a, on a mistake in order to correct your mistake, to show that it's a mistake. Or you put uh, the sign X uh, also to show your mistake. That's all for today. And I advise you to learn all these phrasal verbs with their definitions. They are very useful and you can use it in our uh, reading and writing lessons. Have a good day. Goodbye.